Oh, I've left you on the screen. Look at that. <laughs> well, welcome as along. As if by magic. As if by magic, we are here. Um, One, two, welcome three. to the heart we're turning in the stable studios. Uh, that camera seems a bit squinty or something. I don't know. We'll give it a wee. There we go. Up there. I think that's good night. Yep, that'll do. Um, welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studios. Uh, second live since I've come back. Hooray! I'm all impressed. As you can see, I've got uh, the lovely Joe and William in as earworms this hey, evening. And I've got, it's cold and I've got a terrible drip on my nose and it's annoying me. So, let me just plug it. it out. Hey. Plug it. There we go. I can see the comments again now. Oh, dear. I've got the heater on. It's uh, 16.3 degrees in the workshop. And it's nine degrees outside. <laughs> Chilly. Chilly cool. here in Ireland today. Right. So I'm going to stick you two guys back in the background for a moment. And then I'll talk to the audience. So this evening, uh, in between having a little drop of tea. Lovely. Uh, I've just, did I see, just see Barry's uh, wood creations in the chat? No. I watched one of Barry's videos today. It was an absolutely lovely little pot. If you haven't seen it today, I think he put it up today. Lovely little cheesy, pot. He did, yeah, he did, definitely. Uh, beautiful thing. Um, so have a look at that. And uh, our good friend William here has got a new video up today as well. So uh, pop over and have a look at that. If you're subscribed, if you're not subscribed, why are you not? Uh, let me see. Now, we le I left you with a chalice on the lathe. And uh, me being me, kind of got a bit carried away, <laughs> as I do. Uh, and there was some suggestion we were going to put little gems on it. But we have a little problem that some of the glue is still hasn't actually come quite, hasn't uh, actually set hard enough that I can take it off. But I can get it, I'll sort that out tomorrow. It's not an issue. Um, so I'm going to let you see it now to see where we've got to. It's not quite finished, but it's very nearly. So if I change cameras there, this is for the hashtag week, uh, hashtag decorated chalice. Over it. There you go. There's the said chalice with its little gems. Uh, those little gems were actually glass beads. Um, I think I showed you them the last day, but I'll show you them again just so you understand what I did. Uh, I'll just grab the bead box. <laughs> It's a little box with different bits in it. Let me go there. There you go. So the, these are these little beads, glass beads that are... That's not a very good colour. There you go. You see that one better. Little glass beads. So what I did was uh, I cut them in half. And then I used my uh, small rotary tool uh, from wood art. And I made a recess for the gems to sit in. So I had to mark it all up, and then because they're all different sizes, mark them up and then draw the outline. Now, the easiest way to do that is just put a little double, put a little bit of double-sided sticky tape on the back of your gem, stick it on there, and then draw your line around it. And then you can carve it out easily enough. So that's, uh, <laughs> puts holes in his workshop. Can I ask a question? No, Andy. <laughs> yes, you can. How did, what tool did you use to cut the gems? Oh, well, I used the uh, little, the, uh, I'll show you. Chainsaw, Joe. Chainsaw. Chainsaw, chainsaw. yeah. It was, it was a bit of a devil holding them <laughs> between my fingers and using the chainsaw to cut it like, but no, we managed. <laughs> no, we didn't. I'm only kidding. I'm teasing. I know. So the tools I used to cut the, uh, the gems, the gems, I call them gems, but it's only a piece of glass. So we use this tool. You've all seen that tool before. I hope I, we have. If I go there, no, there, that one. So it's this micro motor. Yeah, mine is a micro motor N8, which is the cheaper version of the uh, tools that wood art supply. And I use one of these. Got to go back to the overhead. I use one of those. Which is a little di diamond cotton wheel for the Dremel, and it fits in here. And then I used 
took once I got it marked out, I used these little uh, bits. They're piercing bits. You're supposed to you know, drill and pierce with them. But if you're very, very careful and take it slowly, you can uh, drill a tiny little hole and then move it a bit like a router. But right. be very careful because they're, they're quite brittle. But I managed to get all four done uh, without any problems, without breaking a, uh, without breaking the drill bit. So that's how that was done. I'll just set that out of the way for a moment. And then as I do, I uh, decided that I would have a little bit more embellishment. And we've used, I've used copper paint um, from, uh, what is it, abstract. You've seen Steve using these quite a bit, these abstract paints. And for Sennelia, uh, and that's the copper. So this is two bands of copper. And the, the band on the, the stem, you remember I, I used the, the uh, Robert Sorby knurling tool. This little guy, I used this little guy just to make like an orange peel effect on it. Yep. And I've highlighted that with a little bit of stir, um, gilt cream or embellishing wax, whatever you want to call it. Embellishing wax, isn't it? That's not, I've left the base au natural, so there's nothing, there's no, nothing in that. The only thing that's left, in, and the last thing I did, and I'll show you in a minute. So that's how I finished that off, guys. And the last thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give it a quick oil, and then uh, part it off, and I'll let you see the whole thing. So let me just get uh, rid of that for a second. I'll bring up my tool rest. And if uh, you remember, I part, started parting this off with a bit of an undercut. Uh, so I'll just continue that undercut. And I'm going to let Joe tell me who's in. But first and foremost, because these are just glued in. Oh, I better tell you how I glued them in. Uh, I used this, this adhesive. Uh, pseudo fix all. And it's crystal. Uh, it's 100% clear when it's dry. Uh, so if you, if you look closely here, you'll see there's tiny little bits of glue still in there, but the idea is leave it for 24 hours, and then you can use like a, an alcohol wipe to take that off again, and it'll come off nice. So first thing I want to do is just tape these gems in, because it takes 24 hours for this to set, and uh, I've only done it today. So I'll just quickly tape them on. Stop them flying off. Just, just in case. I don't think they will, but I'd rather they didn't launch themselves around the workshop. So a couple of rolls of tape around that. Ah, oh, that's loads. And hopefully that'll stay on. That looks like masking tape. That's just ordinary masking tape, yeah. <laughs> and it's put on the correct direction. So if your if your lathe is rotating that way, you need to put the tape on in that direction. That's the correct way to do it. But nine times out of ten, I do it this way, and it works. <laughs> Same as. <laughs> because it's a bit easier, to be honest. But if you've got it glued on or stuck on properly, it's not going anywhere anyway. And you shouldn't be burning your lathe thousands of miles an hour with masking tape on it anyway. Right, so let's get that on. And if you can tell me who's in, one of you two guys. Oh, that's I'll, me. Uh, he volunteered go, me. Go. He, he got volunteered <laughs> again. Yeah. Right. Normal. Well, I'll Good do this, you do that. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> so in the chat this evening, we've got Paul Finley Woodson at home. We've got, got Doug Miller at Woodspoon Round. Got Michelle Oosby, Malcolm Douglas, Mike Evans, Michael McEwen, Haley Wooden Burl, Vinnie Charlton, Paul Hoyton, the Graves Blue Turner.
Andrew Wavy Woodshed. Barry Chitty. Roger Kent. Andy the Woodwork Learner. As real simple thing. Raymond Wise. <sighs> Nigel Harvey. Tony Smith. Brian Greenhaven Creations. Hey, Brian. Mike dances with aardvarks. Now, I've got to the bottom, and that's not what every, everybody's in, so come on into the chat. That's all we've got at the moment, Brian. That's good. The chat. Cool, excellent. So, Welcome along, everybody. Thank you very much for coming in on a Thursday evening. Uh, when is the chalice um, hashtag uh, finished? Is it tomorrow? Friday. Tomorrow. Yeah. And I think you need to have it in by your pictures in by tomorrow. Pictures in by um, yeah, by <coughs> evening tomorrow. Yeah. Larry Nixon is in. James Crawford is just uh, after Larry, coming in as well. Just we'll just sand that foot a little bit for you, just to let you see the foot sanded. Uh, <sighs> Using the patented sanding, the sanding device. Yeah, it's a great job, isn't it? Yep, very simple. A little off cut, full job in it, and a slick yeah. cut on it. And you're all the road. Albert Just Dawson's doing that out of the way. Hi, Albert. Let me have that extractor on. I remember to take my watch off this evening. Good. Robert Broadwood's in. Good evening. Hey, Robert. Evening, guys. A little bit faster. I still cannot get over the how precise that that spalting is on the. I hear. Yeah, you think yeah, it was a pencil just, mark, wouldn't you? Honestly, I just. Amazing, huh? Mistake with a felt tip pen. Mistakes? I don't make mistakes. No, I know you don't. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and if you believe I that, you'll believe anything. That, lads. <laughs> Hello. I'm happy with that. What that was the colour you put on that again, Brian? Was it, was it pear, pear green? Pear green, yeah. Pear green. Yep. Pear green. Pear green. Mm. And it was. That's a kind of, a, almost, almost like a light goldy colour there. It is, isn't it? But it's not in your face, uh, though, is it? Sort of thing where yellow can be really. Mm -hmm. It smacks you, sort of. Some, I've got some. I've got some really smacking face yellows, but I tend not to use them. <laughs> Remember, to switch that extractor off, right? There we go. Now, there we go. One little chalice. Let me just take the. The, uh, can find the end of the tape. There. This. There it is. Oh, you must have eyes like an orc. I never even saw the uh, end Roy, of Roy was. He never misses a thing, boys. Oh, stuck to my finger. Have you on big screen here? That's why. Ah, uh, see. Okay, Brian's asking. Um, unrelated to today, I've been asked to make some glasses stroke cups out of Elm Log. Uh, they will be used for liquid drinks. Suggestions for a finish? Um, if they're going to be used for drinking out of, uh, if it's alcoholic beverages, I suggest you use Rustin's plastic coat on the inside. Because it is kind of it's designed for dining room tables and and things like that, right? So it will stand a bit of punishment. Um, it's like a an epoxy almost. Yeah, it comes a two part. You just mix the hardener with it. You just mix it up, and away you go. Um, 
that's what I would recommend. Um, but you could also use um, Elm. Uh, Elm might be a bit too porous, I think. What do you think, William? Not just yeah, left it's, on its Yeah, possibly, possibly could leak. Yeah. But then we go back far enough, wooden utensils were, were used, bare wood for drinking yeah. and eating. Correct. And I don't, nobody ever died from it, so. I don't think we'd have to go back all that far either. No, no. And Elm was a, was a real popular wood before it died out, <laughs> before we got Dutch Elm disease. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that there would have been lots of Elm dishes and goblets, etc. made. So you can see that uh, that lemon oil that I'm putting on there, that's uh, chestnut's lemon oil. Just because it's a nice light oil and all I want to do is just oil the thing up. And it's making that darken down even, it looks, makes it look more like just a dark wood rather than something that's been colored. But is you it know still dark? It, it'll lighten, lighten up, up a small bit as it dries. It, it will lighten up a bit, but whenever you put liquid on, on wood, it will start to darken a little bit. No matter what the liquid is, no matter okay. what the, anything at all, because it, it will darken. Oh, Raymond Wise is saying he's stopped wood turning now. He's Was building he? boats in his attic and the sails are going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good, Raymond. Uh, there you go. The old, one, the old ones are the best. 10 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Could be expensive so if you want to get out. <laughs> how many coats would you put on? Well, I'm just going to put one on it. I'd say one would suffice. One will be fine, just enough to give it a bit of a seal. And I don't want to do too much because I still have little bits of glue. You can see there's just tiny little bits of glue stuck, stuck in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that has to come out yet, so. That's if it gets anywhere. Uh, other than the bonfire. Don't forget later on, they'll get your picture took and send it over to Steve. No, I won't. Uh, if, you, if you made one of these, the, the email address is uh, skcrafts at btinternet.com. And there we go. Simple one, as that. Very nice. <sighs> one little it challenge. Makes it, it ages it, doesn't it? I it gives, it, it, gives it. it a bit of an age look. Yeah. yeah. So if I put that on there and switch that on and then change to that camera. Oh, you'll notice she's that. Is Susie on the scene? <laughs> no, not yet. No, not oh, yet. She not. She's super tired. And I went to all the trouble and put gold leaf on the rim of that for Susie. <laughs> and she's not even here. I, I, I'll be helping more of that girl. And the yacht should so, get in. Let's go there. Hi, there Lucy. Hi, Glenn. There you go. One Johnny little Foster's in. Evening, Johnny Foster. Oh, that is so dark now. I can't get over that. Yeah, how much it darkened it then? Yeah. So, pear on the outside and plump on the inside, which makes it almost look like black, but it is plump. Oh, no, it looks lovely. I like I like the look of that plum on the inside. There you go. One bejeweled, bejeweled? Hey, <laughs> bejeweled chalice. <laughs> I like it. Bejangled. So that's, uh, that was the, that's the end of that challenge. Or not challenge, but the hashtag week. We shall do something else now just to pass the time for you. Um, anybody, has anybody got any questions about that before I move on to something else? Uh, let me go there. They've been very quiet oh, with the questions this Just evening. like you see again. A couple of little copper bands. Nice bit of spotted beach. I quite like that. It's quite nice. I think that it's after changing to a, to a, to a nice colour. Yep, mm. I like it. So I'll remove the, uh, remove said spinny thing and put it out of the way for now. Lazy Susan. <laughs> Glenn says a question. He says, are they jelly babies? Uh, no, Glenn. If you, hadn't been, if you hadn't been here at the beginning, when you should, you should have been, you'd have seen what they were. So. Jelly babies. 
I'll jelly baby chain. So to jelly tart. So just to entertain you for another half an hour or a quarter of an hour to an hour. I've got this little piece of anybody recognize what that bark is? Except you, William, what? you can be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That'll give it away. And this will definitely give it away. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Redwood. Again. There you go. It's redwood. Yeah. So I'm going to mount it on a woodworm screw. I hope. God, I nearly haven't got the straight. Really? Rob, Rob, Rob Corral, what turning is in? Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. I nearly haven't got the strength to push that on. Get, get Michelle to help you. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. Turn the lathe down to very, very slow. Put the lathe on a little bit. Andy, the woodwork learner's asking if you sent the chuck to Pete for testing. Not yet. I can't need it tonight. Right, let me try and put this on now. That's it. Well, that's uh, I just it. used a bit of mechanical advantage to get that a bit tighter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep going. Ah, that's good, buddy. That's not going it's anywhere. It's good now. It's good now. <laughs> And we'll start by making a tenon on the bottom. Well, we'll clean off the bark and then we'll make a tenon. Try and put this in some sort of shape. No way. Is this like our version of cedar wood? It's actually similar to cedar wood. It's, yeah, it does work. Cedar tends to have a lot of oils and wax inside in the wood. I think it's... I'll bring, I'm just going to bring a tailstock up just to begin with, just till I get that, uh, just till I get started. Uh, we'll put a step center on it. And that'll allow me to get the bark and stuff off. Right, Doug yeah. has a question there. He says, does anyone know where I put my Banksia pods? It's on the shelf behind you there, Doug. Yeah. Andy Woodrock Lerner says, his question he says, will you be able to remove it or will you do a wane? Remove what? The wood off of the worm the screw, I reckon. Thing. Ah, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That's uh, another thing later. <laughs> we should we shall discover that in the fullness of time. I'm just going to go with a three eighths bow, guys. You just uh, take a bit off of this now. I'll just put a face shield on for now. Good evening, Dewey. Hey, Dewey. We'll just work away to get till we get the corners off. Mike Hewill Minster's in. Good evening, Mike. Evening, Mike. Hi, Mike. Welcome along. Thank you for coming in. So we're missing Terry this evening. He's uh, he's away demonstrating tonight. He is. And Pete's missing as well. He's uh, at his local club. So you've got the professional. So we've got the professional tonight. earworms in tonight. Yeah, <laughs> not the amateur half hour. <laughs> Oh dear. It's okay, I'll not tell Pete that. you said that. <laughs> ah, thanks. Carsten Peterson's in. Hi, Carsten. Hi, Carsten. Welcome along. Hi, Carsten. Sorry, Brian, before you go again, um, just look at your screen there. Can you move your picture just a small bit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just so you can see a bit more of your tool rest. There. Yep. Okay, Perfect. Yeah, you want me yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can see. 
Yeah. Does it need, does it need zoomed into the stage? I don't think it does. It's okay. It's okay. Got a bit more speed in it now, I think. Yeah. When you're cutting bits of air, sometimes speed is your friend, but if you've got your pieces too out of balance, don't turn the speed up until you get it a little bit more in balance. Now, you don't forget, it says I'm here. I'm still here, but I'm on my third turn of doom bar. Good man, Lynn. You getting that horrible smell yet, Brian? Not yet. Oh yeah, here it comes, William. <laughs> it stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, don't much like it. What does it smell like? <laughs> I won't um, say. <laughs> all right, that bad. <laughs> I worded a nice way, Joe. Cat pee. <laughs> could, could, okay. it, could I say overripe far farmyard? Could I? <laughs> yeah. I just want to see what arm shape wise. Need to go a bit narrower, I like to get rid of that bark still. So we'll bring it round a bit more and bring it to round. I've seen someone's name come in there. Who was it? Fred. Fred Gilliver. Welcome Fred. along, Fred. Welcome along, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Now, oh, here, Lee. It's is, this, is, is, this, is this timber? Oh, sorry, um, Joe, go ahead. Um, it's Haley. She says, Brian, have you had your picture long? Mine is new, but it's come loose twice, and I haven't had any problems with my other chucks. No, I haven't. It's, uh, I don't think a chuck's coming loose. I'll say, but I don't know what's, what has gone on with and I've tested the spindle. The spindle is definitely true. So I've no idea what is going on. But we will find out in the of time. Yeah, I have the same Patriot Chuck now as well, but I've never noticed. I never noticed it coming loose. Okay. Just a quick guess where I think that tenant should be. We've got Andy Door 60 joined us. Good evening, Andy. Good evening, Andy. Welcome along. It'll be pretty much close, I think. Fifty-two good people in, Brian. Oh, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Now, shape. What do I want to do with shape? That's a kind of kind of roundish. It's almost there. See, I'm quite like um, nice big foot. Foot. Just taking that in a little bit more. And that should make that so we have. A little bit of a just in just a fraction more, I think. Just to give us a little bit of a concave bottom when we take that turn off. Got Mike should do. Ian Tivenon in. He what says, Are you gang? I'm from from Ian at Hubbillers, no less. Not heard of that one. Oh, where? Oh, that's new to me. Uphill welcome along, studios. Ian. Yes, welcome. Right, I'm going to take a little bit more. I'm going to make a bit of a curve and, and then sweep it back out, cause, but I need to get rid of this flat first. So we'll just make it a little bit narrower there. 
and I want to go in there and then start to come back here again. JP's in. JP, Hi, JP. Hi, Jamie. Said zombie wood turners in as well. Hi Zed. Hi Zed. Same no see, buddy. Let's have a look at that now. And just I'm just slowly checking and see where we are shape wise. We'll have to lose a bit here, so we'll be a bit small. No, maybe not. Let me just leave that natural bit in there. Yeah, leave it for the time being and see how it goes. It, it, it could be a pouring bowl. So that's a fairly nice cut in there. What we'll do is we'll change oh, gauges. I like that deep um, pinky red that's uh, emerging. Hmm. Change gauges, get a nice sharp gauge. I think this one's sharp. And we'll try and take a nice little cut just as a finishing cut across this. So handle well down, tucked well into my hip, and just swinging my hips, pushing my right hip forward, my left hip back. And when I get to there, I'm going to change that and left hip forward, right hip back. Um, Fred's asking, um, what is the wood, please? It's redwood. It is for sure. It is very redwood. It's very, very nice. And that'll be enough for cut. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to sand that out. What about a bark left on the bottom there? That'll be interesting, whether that stays or not. But we'll see. I will give this a bit of a sand. And I'm going to start with 120 grit. He says, hopefully. Reaching for the 120 grit sandpaper. It's not, it's one that has 80. Zed says uh, redwood has a high silica content, dulls the tools. So it does it for does, sure. Uh, it that's really just does. what I was going to ask a minute or two ago. Yeah. I was going to ask you, William. Yeah, it has for sure. How high a silica co content has, and it has a high silica. Yeah. Right. Andy says Brian's showing off that his hips still work. So I hear a whole lot of snobbery talked about uh, cutting timber uh, with your with a tool and not being able not having to use um, sandpaper. <coughs> sandpaper is cheap tools, guys. So if you need to use sandpaper, use it. Never do any harm. There we go. This is quite a soft timber, so. That 120 has done its job. We'll jump up to 180. As I continue to say, such the sawdust there is not something you want to breathe too much of. You might get delima lung, which is silicosis. That's enough to cheer people up. <laughs> yeah. Brian has his uh, <laughs> dust extractor going there, and it seems to be working pretty yeah, well. Yeah, it's working pretty yeah. well, is right. I'm looking for a bit of 240 right now. But it's always good practice, guys, to wear a minimum a paper mask, or if you have a respirator, and whatever dust extraction you you have, switch it on. I'm currently wearing my face shield, guys, and so. So she can still hear what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Hence the kind yeah. of hollow sound. 
Jimmy says, I think Sneaks thinks I'm a bad turn. He just gave me a bag load of 60 grit paper. <laughs> Good man, Sneaks. <laughs> Using sandpaper doesn't make you a bad tunnel. No. Using tools incorrectly makes you a bad tunnel. Well, i got to say I'm quite happy. How's that feeling? It feels good. It feels good. Do, 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 do. Like I do that. I just need my little calipers. If I can find said calipers. What have you done, my calipers? My, cal my calipers have run away. I don't know where they live. Well, they're not in the drawer where they normally live, so. This is a bit of a problem. Have you moved out? Ah, this is you've the, been moving the, stuff around, buddy. The, the, they've up and left. Take that face shield off for a month now. And we shall put her... Where are they? Calipers right enough. Does anybody else lose things in the workshop? Just, and they just kind of disappear? No. <laughs> no? Oh, it's just me then? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No more. I'll use my I'll use my very near. I just want to check this uh, tenant size because I just I did guess, just guess it. Oh, look at that! It's fifty mil. Doug Miller's saying yeah. the calipers are in the same place as his banks here pods. <laughs> uh, yeah, keep your banks here pods company. Still not found I'm him, just, Doug. I'm just going to take another mill off of that. That's something I've never turned as a banks here pod. No, me neither, and I don't intend to. Yeah, not good. Uh, well, turned one. I just have I just have no notion at all. I want to be honest. Um, they can be quite awkward at all. Okay. And they have been known to throw bits about your workshop. Sometimes no. a lot of seeds are still in them. Yeah. So we'll take take this away. Get rid of the elbow stabber. Eventually, I had that wind out far enough, didn't I? You did. It's all winding. Oh, it's winding, yeah. It needs a motor on, doesn't it? Well, I was actually thinking about that, but I'm not sure how to achieve it. Just don't be lazy and just. So we'll knock this off. This little nub. Andy Woodrock Larry, he says, fill one with resin, Brian, with a Banksy pod. Uh. There's an well, idea. That, that might be an issue. Yeah, that might be a thought. Yeah. JP says the last one he turned, it exploded on him. Yep, that can happen too. Did you video that, JP? I'll be surprised if there's not a video of it. <laughs> this is JP we're talking about. Sounds Great. like good content. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the content like? YouTube is looking for. <laughs> Things flying all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Indeed. He says, now nah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of those videos that gets you a couple of thousand yep. views. No, Brian, tighten that back up. Ah, okay. You're on a worm screw. Yeah. It's a worm screw. <laughs> Why do I do that every time? Always. <clears throat> right, here we go. Is it coming off? Spat on the hand. <laughs> Do you want me to call Michelle? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not that weak yet. I'm close, but I'm not that weak yet. Jamie says he has another one. He can do it again if you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go for it, JP. Go for it, and why not? If not, why not? Right, now. Now we can open it. <laughs> or we'll be left with the hood room screw on it. Just have to turn around it. <laughs> yeah, that's not as daft as it sounds. Core it out. Yeah. Let's see what kind of wobble we get on this. The piece I had, it was the same as that. I turned it live edge. Oh. Oh, we'll reduce the size of this a bit. Now oh, you turned it live edge, yeah. You did it the other way around. But I just want to be able to see the timber from the outside as well. Yeah. 
So now we'll just come across here and take, try and get rid of, there's a couple of little imperfections on the rim there, chips out. So we'll just come across there. Another gouge, another sharp gouge, because basically I can't be bothered sharpening them. Check for height on center. Tiny little bit up. Give that a spin. There we go. I said my wife just asked if I was watching Scrooge McDuck and Terry Wagon. What? Scrooge McDuck? Hi. Mm. But said it's quite relaxing there. I might resemble that remark. Of course, could have been referring to me and Joe. Yeah, probably. No, I doubt that. Andy, the woodwork learner, is saying, Brian, have a chair ready to take a quick break if you need to. Don't be stubborn. I, I have a stool just, just to, to my left-hand side. If I feel like sitting down, I'll just go and sit down. But I'm good at the minute, guys. Thank you very much for your concern. Mm, I think I'll just take that all the way down to the... Yes, well. Uh, no. So, if you're no. nice knot there, so turn it back toward the camera. There. Oh, uh, a little knot there. there, yeah. Is it going it to fall actually, out? It might fall out. Yeah. But I've got a piece, piece there. And then you have a nice little there. bit of white there on either side. It would be cool if it stayed. But you listen. Take, yeah, well, we'll see. Take a bit off and see. Well, it's going to, if I come down to here, yeah. I've still got Go a little, tiny little bit of white. And that will bring me down to roughly about here. We'll still have a bit of white. Take another bit of lob off just to see. <laughs> I'm going to let um, William read the next <laughs> comment from Bass. <laughs> uh, no, we'll leave that one there. <laughs> what is it? What? what um, <laughs> you don't hear cheer, there's loads of horses outside. Mm, okay. No, the one before. <laughs> the one well, from the days Now I've been called a prick because I told you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell me? <laughs> It was about the Scrooge McDuck. What's, and what's wrong with the word prick? I pricked my finger the other day. Yeah, but that's not what they were meaning, was, was it? So. Yeah, I kind of know that, but uh, I was going to lower myself to their level. I see that little nut just fell out, will you? Oh. oh, it's gone. <coughs> said, said the man with the golden gouge. Hmm. Right, I'm gone, just going to take gone. that down, guys. Just go yeah, go for it. I think so. Da -da. I think so. It's always good practice every time you move your tool rest just to spin the wood up by hand first. Well, very fast, that is it? Like that. Just do a little bit of time, William, just to see where we get there. Yeah, go for it. We're doing it now. You're committed All the way now. down. One more. <coughs> that should be us, I think. That's you, Don. Do I'm still left with a little bit of white. There's a tiny little mark there. Just finish that. Getting into the nice colour now. Yeah. 
It is real pink. You're going to have to excuse me a minute, guys. I'm going to have to put my face shield on because that is a terrible smell. It stinks, doesn't it? <sighs> So I'm hoping you can still hear me. Yeah, yeah. I still hear you, buddy. Is there anybody out there? It's always a good <laughs> idea when you put your face shield off to take them off first. Right. Let me see. There we go. It's better. Get that fresh air. Oh, God, I don't know. That's full from the smell in. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a double dose of it now. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Mark Ford this. has just came in. Hey, Martin. Hi, Mark. Welcome along, buddy. Thank you. Evening, Martin. We'll just tidy that edge up a little bit. Better. Side wall thickness of right there. Sorry, buddy. Just change camera there, will you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's Great job, yeah. Well, that guy's is blunt. Let's go for another one. You'll only get a couple of minutes out of each one. Cut a lot. So what one you think about is when you're coming towards the end of the depth of your cut, you need to rotate your hand anti clockwise and close the face up. So the bottom line doesn't dig in and cut and produce a catch. It can be a bit disconcerting. And if you notice there, that I actually slowed the feed rate away down because I'm getting in towards the middle, but it's actually doing the speed it says on the lathe. It's 1,200 reds currently. But out here, that's going far faster. So in here is doing what it says on your spindle, but out here is going far faster than that. So you need to slow down a bit or speed your lathe up. You slow your rate of feed down. Well, Jim is saying you're saying you don't allow out the whole bow with the number one hollower. Just saying, love. You would for sure. I see. I haven't got a number one hollower. Let me just get rid of that. So that's one way you can hold them. Or you can come from the outside and go in. Let me just change that tool rest a little bit. I'll bring the tool rest in there. So it's just a little bit closer. I do that, like that little bit of white that you can see. Yeah, yeah I think it's nice, Joe, as well. Yeah. Here and it just here. breaks it, doesn't yeah. it? It's... Just uh, whenever you're Whenever you're turning inside of a bow, you want to try and keep your tool rest as close to the tool, uh, tool, sorry, your tool, as tool tip, as close to your tool rest as possible. And that kind of helps with the vibration and stuff. In the line of fire. Ring or something going on there. Because it cuts really nice at the beginning and then it starts to produce like dust. For some reason. 
Maybe my gauge is getting blown already. So I was just going to say, yeah. Almost a finishing cut here, just on this first end. Nice and slow. Take the time. Don't oh, rush. I'm going to have to sharpen that now. Oh no, I've got one more. One more three years full gauge. And then we'll have to sharpen after this. Hold on. I'll just move that tool rest in again. So that's me down to the bottom of the curve now on the outside and I'm just going to bring that across the, the bottom to have a, a slightly concave bottom. Paul Ackery is in the chat. Good evening, Paul. Hi, hey, Paul. I was concentrating there. Who was that? Paul Ackery. Paul Ackery. Paul Ackery. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a ridge just here, so we'll have to go back out to there. And, but I'm going to sharpen this guy first. So, give me a second, guys, while I stick this on the pro edge. I think Andy, you just need to see the pro edge sharpening again. Now, if you do, stick it in the shot and I'll show you. Up too well in here. Brian from Greenhaven yes. Creations has got to run. All right, Brian. See you later, buddy. Thank Take you for coming in. Take you care, now. buddy. Bye for now. So, Pro Edge recommend that you, uh, Robert Thorby recommend that you do one wing, the other wing. And then roll the nose. Roll over the nose, yeah. That's the recommended method. Works for me. So there's no reason why it shouldn't work for you. Right. Just a little thick just here. I'll take a little bit out of there. I said the finish and cut down to here. So we'll just pick it up there. So you hear that little harmonic there? Yeah. Ball is after moving a little bit. Yeah. I think we're good now. I'm a little bit more out of that. I'm going to put that tool rest in as far as I can get it. To support the tool as much as possible. And I'm just going to do a little shear cut coming backwards.
just to take that little edge off. It's quite a difficult cut if you're not confident. Uh, you could easily end up with a nasty catch there. So if you're doing it, just be careful. Basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using that uh, tool as a scraper. But it's a real sharp edge, a real sheer, a real sheer edge. And I hope you can see just where it was there. And that's fine there. You're good. Sandy. Yeah, as Brian said, just be careful because it is a, it's a hard cut to do. It is. It's not a beginner's cut. <laughs> just do it like that. Well, let's bring this back in. I see a lot of bowls made that are, they've got this narrow or thin side and then they go down and they get thin right to the very bottom. Um, in my humble opinion, a bowl needs a bit of weight in the bottom, particularly if the foot's much narrower than the rim. So, that's the, that's the wrong part. Harry Nixon has a question there. He says, do you ever use a ball scraper to clean the, up the inside? Yes. If, if I feel it's needed, I do. Um, Well, I'm quite confident with the uh, with the gouge to reduce that shear scraping cut. But I can sometimes get away with it. And it totally depends on the timber as well. Sometimes you'll get timber that uh, you need to shear scrape it because it will tear out otherwise. But I do have a bull scraper. Bull scraper. There's, a, there's a bull scraper. It's a beast. It's a big boy. So that's the Robert Sorby and it's got a um, what do you call that? Oh, I forgot what you call negative it. rake. Negative rake on it, that's it. It has a negative rake. So that's what I would use sometimes. And I do use ordinary flat scraper as well. I'm not, I have no preference whether it's negative rake or uh, just standard kind of flat bar with 70 degree on it or whatever. Um, no preference. I just use whatever I feel is convenient or right at the time. And you'll never learn that by experience. So if you don't ever try it, how, do you, how are you going to get the experience? That's it. And the other thing about using one of these is sometimes when it gets to the middle, you can't really get the middle done because it slows down too much. So if you bring it into the middle, the way I'm doing there, and then in and out, you can try and maintain the speed in, in the center. And then bring it all the way back out. And dump off the sand. Okay, I'm just sanding. Duh. Chris and Bailey, what works is in? How are you, Chris? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. I've just felt that that edge a little bit sharp, so I'm just going to run that over the edge. And we'll do the same thing on that edge. It just takes the sharpness out of that edge. Softens it a bit, yeah. Yep. I don't like sharp edges on those. So, let's go up a grip. Now, I made a deliberate mistake there. I wonder if anybody sees what a deliberate mistake is. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Keep going. You're committed now. So, a deliberate mistake was that it didn't clean the bowl out. So it didn't remove the dust that was there to begin with. Uh, so I'm now just sanding dust. And I'm just looking for a little brush to brush it out and I can't find it. The dust can hold out. remnants of the previous grit as well, so. It can't. All right. I can't find my brush, so I just have to use the air. Uh, woodwork learner says, have you noticed how quiet it is tonight? How and peaceful it is. says, there is nothing that wise, love. Yep. Yeah, roil, that, roiling up everybody. Yeah, Terry is actually a, a, a club. I forget what he said he was going. He's he at a club this evening. Yeah. Uh, de demoing, I think. Yeah, he's, he's doing a thread chasing demo, I think. He is indeed doing a thread chasing demo. <laughs> 
So you'll be creating havoc wherever he is. Yep. Well, he certainly won't be doing it peacefully, that's for sure. We all know Terry. Another grit. Up to 249. I'll do the right thing this time. Some beautiful grain in that wood, isn't there? Fine, that is. I'm concentrating that outside the edge a minute because I thought I'd just seen a little line there, but I think it's my imagination and just the way the grain is. I'm only going to sand this up to 240 because it's a utilitarian piece. It's just a little bowl for throwing your keys in or a couple of pieces of fruit or whatever. So it doesn't need to be Crisps. all hunger, grit, shiny, perfect. There we go. We could be Yorkshire grit it. But I don't think it needs it. I'll just give it a dust off with a piece of cloth. Or tissue, sorry. And we'll... Uh, that looks good. We'll put beautiful. a finish on it. Will it be any? Will it be any particular um, preference to what finish you would like to see on that? Because it will take anything. It will for sure. Um, now we could do Danish oil and let it and let it. Uh, I was just going to say it'll it'll seep, take an oil really well. It will, uh, rather than try to polish it. I don't think it needs to be a shiny. There's enough going on in that wood that doesn't need to be shiny. Yeah. I think sometimes we try and yeah. over shine things too <laughs> Zed much. Zed says, oh, be shine. <laughs> oh, be shine. Yeah. Send me some. Yeah, Doug says, glass lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No. Um, if I could get a lid off um, Martin's citrus polishing oil, I would have tried that, but I can't get a lid off it. And he says, gold leaf for Susie. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I think we'll just go with some Danish oil, I think. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. We'll, give, we'll give it a little, a little coat of Danish oil. Let me just clear up some of those shavings a bit. Okay. Zed said you can make all be shine. It's just boiled linseed and shellac. Yeah, but... I've often tempted to make some, but I just but, never got around uh, to it. It'd be a whole lot better if you just sent me it, Zed. <laughs> <laughs> Save me the bother of making, you know what I mean? Not that I'm lazy or anything. No, you like it. You yeah, like I'm lazy. Yeah. Stuff. Sorry, I'm lazy. No, you're right. I'm lazy. Said right, I'm lazy. Bone idle. <laughs> you know. I really should have shook that ton a bit more, eh? Seeing it hasn't been used for a while. A day or three. So it hasn't been used for a day or three, so we'll give it a bit of a shine. <laughs> And dilute it with some ethanol. God's yeah. sake. That's like things well, I'll I put in my tractor. <laughs> <laughs> so stuff I'd put in my tractor. Yeah, bioethanol. Right, so we've got a little tub of... Uh, How long have you had that tub? <laughs> it's very orange looking. <laughs> well, I'll darken this down a wee bit. It'll be grand. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is a stunning piece of wood. I have to say. That is gorgeous. really is. Mm -hmm. Now, I've put loads on there, so I'm just going to let that soak in a minute. We'll go to the overhead and let you see it coming on the overhead. A little bit of bark left on here, which has stayed on okay, which is fine. That uh, oil will help to seal it? that in. That is gorgeous, really is. Does this stuff harden? It does. 
it it's does a dry, well. it's what you what you call a drying oil. So over a period of 24 hours, that'll set hard. It'll soak into the wood. So what I'm going to do is just put that on and leave it for a few minutes just to let it soak in and uh, get into the timber. I'll wipe off the excess with a cloth and we'll just have a quick cup of tea, a quick slurp of the tea while we're waiting. Oh, that is a beautiful piece of wood. I've just seen it on the camera. There again. Go there again. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, he's not. Even though I say it myself. So just a simple little bowl, guys. Yep. Just a, and I'll just wipe that off now. It's nice to see a different wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I got this nice piece of wood from my, my good friend William there. <laughs> He had a few bits lying about. He said, take one of them with you. I think no, not that, again, no, not that bit, that other bit as well. And that <laughs> other bit. <laughs> I think there was a bit for Terry. I think Terry got some too, yeah. didn't he? Uh, Terry got a couple of bits as well, yeah. He did. So. It's hard to get redwood around these parts because. Mm. There was a couple of big um, sequoia trees in um what is uh, what's the name of the park? Tollymore Forest Park. Tollymore Forest Park, which is just outside Newcastle County down here. It is for sure. That blew over in the storm, Ooh. and they wouldn't allow anybody to come and take it away. Oh, it's no. lying on the ground, rotting away. Oh, that's a shame. shame. It is. What a waste. Yep, totally. I mean, I mean, big trees too. There must have been. Four feet and that four feet across the da across the uh oh, right. the the diameter. So there were good I remember, big trees. I remember where that wood came from. For it came from a private estate um in Dublin and the tree was over six or seven hundred years old. Uh, so that was a limb that broke off. So my yeah. buddy gave it to me. Uh -huh. And you did the decent thing and passed it on to everybody else as well. You're a good man, William. You are. I have to say. Because I, I, I've, I've actually, it's, it's nice to turn. Stinks. The <laughs> high heavens. <laughs> and it but looks nice. It's a nice thing to turn. And it's easy to get a nice finish on it. That's gorgeous. So the only thing we have to do now is take the tin off. And we'll remove the tenon by taking it off the chook. And joke. Zed said he can find it on the beaches around here all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, that certainly wasn't losing the nut chuck. Nope. I had a job of getting that off there. Oh, no space for it. Hold on a minute. What's going on there? Chucks have multiplied. No, no, missing a chuck buddy. I must have took it down for some reason. Why did I take that chuck buddy down? Set it over there. I'm missing a chuck buddy. I should have six chuck buddies there, and there's only five. Hmm. <sighs> Take the mice bin in again. Now, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do it. Oh, we've got a small one. We've got a small one. Let's go to here, and we'll use a friction plate to take this off. So, just this friction plate. There. But, uh, a bit of router, router mapping, is it? Yeah, router mapping. And that's just a faceplate ring that comes with the with the business, with the machines. <laughs> Rob from Copper Owl says, Michelle found a use for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have that one, and I also have, oh, this one. This is another one for bigger stuff. Oh, so anybody, anybody who follows my channel will know where that piece of wood came from. <laughs> or should do. <laughs> it's the remain it's the inside of the uh inside of the steady rest that we made. I, I still have the plywood here with the same marks on it. So we're gonna use a life center. Is anyone looking to make a steady rest? Brian done a great video on it there because that's how my where I made mine. Thank you, William. Appreciate that. I don't need that big tool. What am I doing that for? 
Oh, we need a wee small one for this job. Right there. Bring up my tail stop. And we're going to use the, where I learned this was uh, uh, Phil Anderson. That's where I learned how to do this bit. Yes, I still can't see the little mark in the middle, thank goodness. If I could get it on a point on it, that's it there somewhere. We'll just advance that one up now. And hopefully we're in the right place. The right place-ish. See what that looks like. Take that back a bit. Getting all tied up with my handles here. Now, if you happen to forget where do you where the uh, to mark the center, you could usually just use a center finder. But I'm just I'm just guessing here. Put that in there and give it a try. And you just got a tiny little bit that way. Try that. Yeah, I think that'll be close enough. And that should hold that enough. I hate this thing. The, the design of this banjo. Yes, I was just going to say, it, yeah. You need to quill out wonderful. all the way. You need to quill out a good long way before you can get your tool rest in there. That should be enough, I think. Push that back. Wind that up again. God, I'm still just about not making it. There we go. Get that in there. I'm just slightly below center. And we'll just use a little spindle get our, I'm going to use a spindle gouge just to take this off. But what we'll do is I'll go towards the headstock first. That's miles away from being true. Yeah, I'll be all right. Be okay. The wood is pretty soft anyway. If you want, you could sand off the little bit, the last little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's all. Well, I'll just sand off the last little piece. It's not a big deal. They just take little cuts. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah, you're good. A bit, a bit. That's better. Yeah. Again, you've got the, the same issue here when you're getting towards the end of your cut. Make sure you rotate your tool closed. Um, so what I'm going to do with my right hand, thumbs on top currently, and as I get closer, I'm going to go anti-clockwise, and my thumb should end up at sort of nine o'clock. Thumb on top again. We'll take my hand again, close it, nine o'clock, and just use that little shear scrape again. Take that bottom out. We're going to sand that anyway, so it's not going to matter. The only thing we need to make sure is that we leave a little bit concave. We'll just check that quickly. By means of a steel ruler. That's almost perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one final cut now. I'm just going to push the cut all the way into the edge. Uh, to the center, sorry. Just from about here somewhere. Casting is going. Is this and that's me rubbing the bed else? all the way in there. And I'm just going to let that cut. And I'm going to turn the speed down. Bye, Carsten. Take care, Carsten. Thanks for coming in. So by keeping the bevel rubbing and wait until that nub stops turning, I can then stop the lift. There we go. Hold on to the bolt. Withdraw said. And there we have a bolt. Just get everything out of the way now and I'll show you that um, as we're finished.
this all back off again. I always chicken out and sand the last little bit. Well, I've watched Phil Anderson do it often enough, and I've done it often enough myself now, so I just kind of go for it. Let me just put this up. Um, I'll sand this up later, guys. No need to do anything right now. I'm just going to put some oil on it just to... Nearly good enough cut to be all right anyway, so... I just want you to see the colour of the thing. There we go. Give it another quick wipe of the oil. So if I go to the overhead, so there's what it looks like on the inside. And the it's really nice. Shape, Cheers. The outside shape is just, just a slight OG, kind of straightish here to start with, and then beveled out and back in again. Um, so that's that little bowl. And if I just, uh, what do I do with that other thing? Oh, there it is. There's our little. So there's our two little projects completed tonight. Lovely. Oh, oh I'm there. No, it's not one of these. There you go. Two little projects complete tonight. And we'll give uh, Maurice a little dust off. It's uh, covered in red dust. <laughs> he's, he's, he's been a. There we go. <laughs> So there you go, guys. That's that little project done for the night. I hope you've enjoyed that. Great um, job. I've, I've, I've enjoyed doing it. Um, <clears throat> and if you've learned something along the way, that's even better. And if you haven't learned anything... There's no hope for you. <laughs> there's absolutely no hope for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, if you haven't learned anything and you want to learn something that uh, nobody's showing you, stick it in the chat. Or stick it in the comments of the video. Uh, I read all the comments. If you want to see something in particular done, um, I'll try and do it, but if I if I don't know how to do it, I'll find out and I'll get somebody else to do it for you. If that, uh, <laughs> I thought if that doesn't work, and I can learn at the same time. So um, just because I'm a a member of the Register of Professional Turners doesn't mean to say I know everything. I'm still right at the very beginning of my journey as a wood turner, and I learn something new every day. When you stop learning, uh, uh, an old mentor of mine said, when you're green, you're growing. But when you're ripe, like you know everything, you're starting to rot. So it's much better <laughs> if you stay a little bit green and stay growing. Um, then you're growing all the time. And that'll be a better way to go. There we go, guys. Thank you very much for your time. It's 10 minutes to nine. That'll be enough for me tonight. I'm going to get a cup of tea and sit down and rest myself. I'm going to bring William and Joe back in. Sit up, please. Pay attention. They've been sitting there sleeping half the time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here they come. There's William and Joe. Thank you very much for, for to you two guys for coming in. You're very welcome. assisting by welcome. looking after the chat. Uh, Fred Giller says, brilliant, Brian. No Terry telling you what to do. Yeah, it's good fun, Terry telling you what to do, though. You get to ignore <laughs> them then. It's fabulous. Yeah, wind <laughs> them up. Right, we're done. We're going to go. Is Anybody got any last final questions? Uh, no. Good. I'm glad they heard. <laughs> Terry's back on all, Sunday, uh, isn't he? Terry's back on Sunday. I'll be here warming. I'm going to talk to the living daylights out of him. Um, Fred, oh, Andy. Um, Andy says, sorry. thanks for putting up with me. You're very welcome, Andy. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Andy. Um, Steve will be on tomorrow night. Um, he will. A little special thing on tomorrow night. Watch this space. Be there or be square, as they used to say when I was growing up. Uh, so we're doing that. Myself, myself uh, Terry and uh, Steve are doing something. Might be interesting. Anyway, we'll see. You might not like it. But anyway, who cares? <coughs> and uh, Steve should be on again on Sunday. And he'll be doing the hashtag. So make sure you get your entries in for the hashtag. After By tomorrow, the yeah. This now and get the email in. <laughs> well, it seems everybody in Brian has pressed the wrong button. So, good night.
good night. He's Bye laughed everyone, out. and take so, care. Anyway, until next take time. care, everyone, and thanks for coming in. Okay. Bye. So, but, he's, oh, he's back. He's oh, back. He's back. <laughs> well, I, I actually scrolled the mouse down the bottom of the page, and as I scrolled it, I hit the down button, and it was right on the lead studio bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've said good night to everybody. <laughs> Wayne yeah. is hoping to do Saturday. Oh, good job. So look out for Wayne coming on on Saturday, right. guys. Uh, and I'll see you next week. I think I'll be back on next Thursday again. Oh, we He's missed gone. all that, didn't we, William? We missed all that. Yeah. When we said bye, we just said bye. Every time. Ah, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> good night, everybody. We're all we're gone. Yeah. We're out of here. Right. Take I'm care. Gonna say, I'm going to say good night. You can say good night. I'll go press the button. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>